Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Malachi Kautip. We're going to be bringing you another game of StarCraft 2. Tonight my opponent is NTM. So, got a crazy number of League Play games. I think it's probably the highest number of games any of my opponents have played thus far. So, going to be loading up the map. And we have NM NTM, excuse me, as the Red Terran spawning in the upper right hand corner of Blistering Sands. And we have me, Malachi Kautiver, the Blue Zerg, spawning in the lower left hand corner. And I can't remember if I said left hand corner for him as well. I might have, but he is definitely the Red Terran in the right hand corner. So, anyway, Blistering Sands. I kind of like this map for Zerg. It's got a small, little bit of a smaller rush distance. It's not that bad early in the game to get your, you know, non-speeded lings, get roaches over to the other side of his map. I suppose it's about the same as what you would find in, say, Lost Temples, being, you know, I'm here, you're here in the map, but really not all that bad of a rush distance, but also good for Terran as well, moving that, you know, a little bit of a slower mech army, and something that's kind of added disadvantage for the Zerg is these high ledges just stack the Zelmago with tanks, they have their full sight range, you know, Zerg's got to come down here, dip through, or put your tanks up here on the high ledges, your Thors, you know, you can just do a lot of different things with the map. So what we're going to be seeing right here is I'm definitely going to be going for a fast expand play just because I really don't have to worry too much about Reapers. And Blizzard happened to make Roaches awesome with four range. You know, it seems like a small thing. I don't know if it really has made Zerg OP or not, but I find myself deploying a lot of Roaches, which actually, to my dismay, my love for Roaches now against Terran has also spread to my, you know, games with Protoss. And I found out that Colossus, even though... 4 range on the Roaches is pretty good. 9 range on the Colossus makes the Roaches Colossus food. Colossus food. So, anyway, we have the Barracks going up over here. Not at the front of the map. Something a little interesting. Kind of would have liked to see the Barracks up here. Like, if I were a Terran player, this just might be the Zerg talking about that Barracks would go there. Armory, you know, Supply Depots, whatever it is, would go right here. I'd be fast expanding. I'd be macroing up. But, you know, this is a guy who's got almost a thousand league games. Let's, get, let's see what NMT... NMT... NTM, Nimt, we're just gonna call him N, let's see what N has to offer, so he's scouting me over here, and because I saw that his barracks is going up way back here at the back of his map, I decided to throw down a spawning pool, and I'm gonna be just a little late getting some of these workers over on gas, it's really important that you get those workers on the gas right away, because depending on the build that you're going for, like in this case, I probably will want to go fast banglings, I like to have at least 100 gas right when that pool finishes, and I'm actually only going to have about 50 thereabouts, which means that my speed is delayed, my banglings are delayed, whichever way I decide to go with, and yeah, only 40 gas, but not too big of a deal, my hatchery is going down, and both of us looking a little light as far as the harvesters are going this point in the game, and it might just be because I normally don't run this build, so it just might feel foreign to me as far as what I have going on for, you know, my timings and stuff like that, I probably will end up supply capping myself to check out the production right here. And Oh no, I didn't. God, that's just so cool, but definitely will be getting a little bit of a later queen because I'm choosing to go four lings right away, probably some more lings after that. And do I have speed going down? Nope, have not, do not have speed going down, but there's the bang link nest. So you guys can probably see what I'm hoping to go for right here, and he's actually starting to build a little wall of these marines, and they don't plan on letting anyone through. You know, they're just, these guys are going to form a little wall right here. And they're going to be like bouncers. This is an exclusive club, and if you don't have the right wristband, you can't get in. But there goes my queen, Bangling Nest, getting pretty close to being finished with no speed yet. And this hatchery is almost going down. If we take a look at what he's got going on, there's a factory going down, reactor going up on the barracks. So he's just going to be pushing out those marines. And going back to the income right here, I'm only ahead of him by one, but that mule going down just gives him that much more, you know econ that he can do, and let's see if I turn any of these guys into banglings, only six zerglings going to be two banglings out of the group, and right here we have a starport and an armory going down, so we could definitely see some Thor play, this is probably going to be a Destiny Cloudfist build, actually, I played the game, I know what it's going to be, you guys are going to see a Destiny Cloudfist build, and we're going to see what I can do as far as pushing this back, am I going to be able to wrap, react to having the Thor dropped right here in my mineral line, or dropped right back here where nothing can get at him. So right here, I did get a bangling up there, and I did manage to kill a few of the marines, but now it's time to run this little Zergling home, you know, he's seen what's going on, he's gonna go back home and tell brave tales about how his Zerg brothers exploded and spewed acid all over a few marines, and how everyone else got roasted by flamethrowers. That's just gonna make everyone real happy. Check out the production tab right here, my speed's on the way, and 14 units worth of Zerglings, so seeing that, I know that he's only got a few hellions and a few marines, I'm going to push out with these Zerglings and see if I can't make something happen, just because when there's no wall there, you're almost inviting Zerg into your base, and at that point, as a Terran, he 
really could have a bunker right here, and then just a few Marauders to seal the deal, and that would really stop a ball like this. My speed almost going down. I'm going to move them out now, by, because by the time they get right about here, my speed will be done, and that's exactly what I want, because I could just run straight past this. I wouldn't even have to engage these guys. They did manage to scare my Overlord away over here, and there come my Zerglings. Oh, I was a little off my counter. There we go. Speed, speed, speed. And... I'm in here. I'm not going to take any time to make any banglings. We're just going to go back to the income tab and watch that. But right here, these marines just getting cleaned up real easy. This hellion running back over here, and I love this play. He buries his hellions right back over here, or this hellion, and surrounds it with SCVs. So this hellion is just going to be racking up some kills. Actually, only three kills. But, you know, my zerglings definitely doing what I brought them in here to do as far as that's concerned. You know, the medevac is there and is saving a lot of SCVs. You guys are kind of interesting. They can be healed both by the... SCVs can repair SCVs, and they can be healed by medevacs. I think it's because it's like these little dudes just floating around in these suits. They're kind of awesome, though. I wish we had those. Ellen Ripley would be happy if she'd go and kill some aliens with them, but I'm definitely pulling ahead as far as the economy goes. That little pickup right there through the grass, definitely well needed, but... You know, as far as that goes, we take a look right here. The Thor ship is on the way, so this is going to be his chance to pull back pull this back together to see what he can do, and right now, all of my Zerglings, they're running towards his base, you know, they want to go, they want to eat stuff over here, but he's like, no dude, you're going to get Destiny Cloud Fisted, I just think that's the coolest name, so there goes a Roach Warren, and I'm going to be planning on using Roaches just to help me bust down this back door until I see this Thor here, and I, you know, I knew that this stuff was going down, but right here, I'm actually not getting that many kills, because the SCVs are just, you know, tanking the Marines right here. Just blows that queen straight to hell. I am managing to pull off all my workers, and actually I did pick up quite a few harvesters right there. He's down to 10 out of 28 harvesters, so it's really up to this Thor to make something happen. I've got a little pack of Zerglings right down here, and if we check out the production, I have two more coming. He's got a Hellion coming out. I'm just waiting for this reinforcement so I can have all these Zerglings, because if he wants to pick up the Roach Worm, whatever. You know, I'm just going to have to let him take it. At least he's not going after my lair. And right there, the Thor is just like, yeah, dude, I'm going to run away. No need to fight this battle. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take all my Zerlins. And is he going to drop it? Going to drop it? Going to drop it? Oh, no. I've got my Zerg. There we go. Let's I have my Zerglings actually set to auto-follow this medevac right here. So the hope is that if he decides to drop that Thor, I should just be able to get right on that. You know, if I was crafty enough, I would have moved my queen down here and started picking this off. Forcing him to drop the Thor. Maybe lose a few Zerglings, but then you know what? Would have been a nice little pick-me-up right there, because that Thor would be down. If we go back to the income tab right here, he just has to focus on macroing up, building more workers. And I love this right here, just dropping the Thor right down there. I run my Zerglings around, and I foolishly have them all set to, you know, just one hotkey right now. I don't even have half of them hotkeyed. And he's pulling his medevac back right here, manages to grab the Thor, and he's just going to drop it back here again. You know, why not? And this Thor, he's just racking up the kills. This guy is, you know, a baller. Now he's like, I'm going to fire missiles over here at these overlords, because I've got nothing better to do than get picked up right here as your Zerglings come down, and go back in here and just keep killing stuff. You know, I'm just going to keep blowing stuff up. You know, this guy and the boom headshot guy would have a lot in common, because he's just pulling headshots. That's what this Thor is doing. So I'm going to evacuate my drones, pull them back here, and my queen going to be taking shots at this medevac, because i got to bring this down, but the good... I guess I could say the redeeming part about this is I did run a few more Zerglings into his base just for the fact that I could to see what's going on. There's a handful of Marines. Let's get back here to this Thor ship. Now, even though he has this Thor flying around over here, his economy is really weak, but he has managed to kill quite a few of my Harvesters in the midst of doing that as well. And I have more Speedlings going out here, and I'm actually going to morph these guys into Banglings once they get over to the enemy base and hopefully just blow up all these Marines. That's the plan. There we go. Banglings kind of make him on the side. Thor ship, and this is horrible right here. My queen, my queen actually sealed the fate right there of herself and allowed that Thor to get away by blocking that off. Her guts are a sad reminder of just how big and immobile those queens are, even on creep. They think they can do some good, but they really can't. And right here, I could have picked off this medevac when I watched this replay. I realized that, and just facepalm right there, because this medevac could have been shot down three times over. And you guys did miss that little battle that went on over here, but if you'll notice... It's marine-free, which is very nice, but the mule's definitely helping him actually keep up and just blow me away in terms of economy right now. I don't know where all my workers are going, but, you know, we'll check out the store when he gets, gets back, 
But I'll tell you guys one thing, he's probably got 20 or 30 kills. That Thor ship, well worth his weight in gold. I mean, 6 health in the medevac, the Thor is in the red. You cannot ask for a better situation or a better grasp, but right here, I'm actually going to run these Zerglings into the base, and without having that second tank there, this tank's just going to be tank food right here. And I'm going to manage to pick up that tank, and this is why I think he should have walled off in the front, because this is the fourth or fifth time, and you're, he's actually going to be blowing up a lot of his own SCVs right here, which is just pure awesome that he's doing that. And let's see how many harvesters he's going to be down. You know, killed, killed five of his own harvesters, and look at that, 21 kills. My god, that is sick. But the reason why I think he should have done that wall off is how many run-throughs could have been prevented just by simply building a barracks and a supply depot there. I mean, I probably would have blown it up, but I wouldn't have had nearly as easy of a time going through there and just repeatedly taking advantage of his economy. Right now I've got a lot of roaches, I've got a lot of zerglings, and I want to move out and I want to make something happen. But we've got two tanks here, a handful of marines. If he can get these tanks into a decent position and get the marines up here, it's going to be tough for me to move through because these tanks, they three-shot roaches, marines, you know, they work on the zergling there. Always send him one zergling first, see what's going on up there. And that zergling, he paid dearly with his life, but that has just saved all of his Zergling brothers, and these two are going to suffer the same fate where they need to run through. But right here, I didn't get a chance to see that these tanks were in that reposition, otherwise I would have ran through. And we're going to see if I actually decide to commit to this attack. There's just a lot of Marines here, these two tanks, a medevac. I really do not know if we check out the army composition right here. This is a bad idea for me. I hope I pull these guys out. You guys are just going to have to wait and see if I do. I'm going to ruin it. I will be pulling them back, and I'm going to hug the wall right here just to make sure I do not get hit by these tanks in their crazy good range. And going over here, if we check it out, both of us still pretty even on the in income, but right now, I know that he's turtling up, or at least I'm hoping that he is, and I'm going to just push some units because I feel pretty secure in my group of roaches and in my group of zerglings that I have right now, and I could be doing a way better job at spreading creek, but you know, who does that? Who wants to move troops quickly in between your two bases? That's just absolutely ridiculous. But me having this boosted up economy, the fact that he could never really shut down either one of my bases, I did decide to rebuild the roach warren over here.